You tweak colors, adjust fonts, move things around, but still something just feels off about your website and you can't figure out why and what it is. Chances are you're making one of the following mistakes, but don't worry, by the end of this video, you will know exactly how to fix it. We're diving into real websites submitted by this community and some of the biggest struggles that we'll tackle today include, my color palette just isn't giving the right vibe, Help. This section feels like a mess. Do you have any better layout ideas? My photos don't feel polished or professional. How do I find better, more cohesive ones? And there is one mistake that I see all of the time that instantly makes a website feel unpolished. I'll show you what it is in just a second. So if you have ever looked at your website and thought, oh, something is off, but I don't know what, this video is for you. First up, a layout fix. We are on the lovely Gail Raleigh's website and she has three opt-in gifts happening here side by side. Now, I wanna focus on the one on the left. So this is, if I read closely to the kind of scripty text there, it says, top three skills that will help you lose weight for good. So it's very clearly a three-part video series. That is obvious, that is in heading text, that's fantastic. And then we have a sign up option now. In an ideal world, here's what I love to see for opt-in areas. First, we would like a visual of the item. And so we are moving in that direction with this graphic here, but it would be nice if we kind of understood from the graphic also kind of what format this is in. So it would be nice if we actually took this and put it into maybe a laptop, for example. The other thing which you want is a very easily readable title. So this one, it's a little bit hard to actually read the scripty text. It's not that big and it's a little, it's in a font that makes it tough to read. So I would just turn that into something a bit larger larger and bolder and easier to understand. And then a bit of a description is ideal as well. Ideally something kind of like curiosity inducing or that sounds really exciting about what it is that they're going to learn. Maybe breaking some beliefs that people have about this topic could be really good in let's say like two to three sentences. Okay, so in just a matter of minutes, we have taken this and turned it into this. This layout works well because we have a visual of the item. The title is very easy to read, easy to spot, easy to see. We have some other visuals happening on the page, which adds some visual interest. And then we have our call to action there. Now this layout design is actually one which I just designed the other day. I made an entire video where I from start to finish basically redid an entire page of my website and the design and walked you through the process for doing so too. So if you are interested, you can watch that one up here. The next website that we're on is the fabulous Wine Talk with Ellen. Ellen, love this topic. Um, in this website, what I want to do is walk through finding really fitting colors. So Ellen has an incredible deep wine red. It's a bold and rich color. And I really wanna find a secondary color that complements it without competing. I like to typically have one very strong color on a website and then a few more, which are maybe more like neutrals or less intense colors that sort of complement the main color. I'm using imagecolorpicker.com to figure out the exact color code that Ellen is using right here. Just hover over some of the red, pick it out. Copy that. Okay, so I've come to colors.co and here we can do something really fun. I am going to input my color code from Ellen's website. Let me click here, input the hex color code. And now I'm going to lock this one. And if I hit the space bar, it will show me all sorts of different color palettes that can work with this. I'm just gonna keep going until I find a few which I like. I quite like this one for the reason being that the dark purple on the right hand side looks kind of grapey to me. Then we have our red and then we have some neutrals. I quite like that actually. Let's keep that in mind. Okay, this one's similar to the one before, but I actually like that the purple now is called the English Violet and is a bit more muted in tone, which means that I have more just one color that's standing out, whereas before it was two. And so I actually like this quite a bit better. So let's try it with this one. So this color petal that I've settled on here reinforces the warmth and sophistication and the cozy intimate feeling that you want in a wine focused brand. 
I could see on a website, we have the apricot and the melon color sort of as background colors, English violet maybe for some headings, and then the fire brick for some calls to action on a page. And there we go, just in one or two minutes, I pulled together that color scheme into a little website redesign with some fitting imagery and that beautiful red color used as the standout call to action button, but then the other colors complementing it as opposed to trying to compete. Okay, so we've talked about fixing layouts and colors, but let's be honest, none of that matters if your site isn't generating revenue. A beautiful website is great, and don't get me wrong, we do want it to look good to bring across your trustworthiness, but if it's not converting visitors into clients or sales, something is missing. That's exactly why I created my free training, Four Simple Steps to Double Your Site Sales. It walks you through the biggest shifts that make a site actually work to generate revenue, and they're super simple to implement. So if you want to make sure that your website isn't just pretty, but also profitable, you can grab that training for free. I will link it below for you. Moving on to heatherhammerphotography.com. This one is beautifully done in terms of the design. Congratulations, Heather, you did an incredible job here. The one thing which I would like to change on this one is the SEO. And this is the main problem that I see with this website. Heather, I didn't know where you were located. And because you're a photographer, this is an in-person business. Therefore, very important. I can only probably work with you if you're in my area or I have to decide if I wanna fly out to you. So I was taking a peek. I could not find where you were on the website. When I went to your Instagram, I did uncover the secret that you are in Louisiana. So the one thing which I would like to see is on your actual website, let's take that location and make it very prominent. It doesn't need to be large in terms of text or anything, but the important thing is that it's on there somewhere so that people can easily find it. Typical locations that you would find this keyword would be in the footer. So somewhere down here, maybe just like serving. And then if there's specific cities or an area in Louisiana that you typically do, that would be very useful to just put a little line down here saying exactly that. The other area where I would like to see it is just up in your like top header. You could literally just down in the corner here say based in wherever or serving wherever um, or Louisiana portrait photographer or whatever that is. And that term Louisiana portrait photographer is going to be your keyword. And when I say keyword, keywords do not need to be confusing. They don't need to be complicated or anything. Basically just think about if someone is searching for a photographer searching in your area, what would they be typing into Google? That is probably your most important keyword on your website as a photographer. If your website doesn't say where you're located, Google won't rank you for local searches and local searches are so important for physical based businesses or businesses sort of like in a certain area, like a photographer. It's a very small take. It doesn't take a lot of time to do, but it will make a huge difference. So again, the places to add it, on your homepage, up at the top, above the fold. Your about page would also be good, and then again, in the footer. The other thing to know too, is that we can also change your URL slugs for your specific pages too. So let's say on here, I'm on your family photography page, and so our URL slug is forward slash for family. What we could do is family dash photographer dash Louisiana or dash whatever city you're in in Louisiana. That would be another good way to get your keyword in too. Next up, we have slowerhiking.com. This website is from Helen and Jeff, and they post about all of their fabulous hiking adventures, which I love. Now, a few things which I think could really quickly elevate this website is one. Up in our top left-hand corner, the Slower Hiking logo, the one thing which I don't love about it is that it has a background behind it, which doesn't then blend in with the rest of the header. So the header, we have this brown color, the back of the Slower Hiking logo is gray. In an ideal world situation, there just wouldn't be, it would be a transparent background. So let me work on that. Okay, so I changed some things really quickly. I love the brand that's happening here. It really leans into the earthy tones, which represents the slower hiking ethos. But the gray, which we had before to complement it just felt sort of off to me. So I wanted to pick one of these two colors to make the primary color and then find a pairing for it. Now I don't personally have access to the logo file, so I just went into Squarespace and I wrote slower hiking in some regular text, which looks similar to the original. And there we have our logo without the rectangular background of gray around it. So it blends in a bit better with the navigation heading. 
I used the same text that was on the original website, useful tips and exciting itineraries for leisurely hikers. I took out slower hiking again in the top um, header area because we already have it in the logo, so it's a little bit redundant, but I did add in in Australia and overseas because that gives it a little bit of context as to the main locations that these hikes are in. When I went to the drop down option on the website, you could see day hikes in Australia and overseas. And so it made me realize that those are the primary areas which this website is serving. And so I went ahead and put that in the um, very top of above the fold on the homepage. Now I don't have access to the original photo, but I would just want to say, Helen and Jeff, you chose a beautiful picture here. I did just want to mention when you do have a background image, which is a bit busier, it's nice to have some sort of background to the text that overlays it, just so you make sure that you can really read it very well. And it just looks a bit cleaner too. Now, because I didn't have access to that photo, I just chose another sort of fitting photo, which I had for my stock photo library. And for this one, this would be a situation where we don't need to put a background on it because the photo is very um, consistent in the look and also the depth and the color. And so it doesn't as much require a background section, though it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world if we did that either, to be honest. But especially if you have a big busy picture, it's useful to put a background. Now, one other suggestion I want to make is that images set the tone for a website and are a major factor in how quality that it feels. So looking through the blog posts, I think in a few occasions, on many occasions, Helen and Jeff, you've done an incredible job of choosing the right fitting image for the blog post. But on a few, I feel like we could have a better thumbnail image to communicate what we want to communicate. So this blog post here is on lightweight backpacking breakfast. And in an ideal world scenario, I would love to see an image of an incredibly tasty looking breakfast as a thumbnail post image. And when I do go into the actual blog post itself, you guys have clearly put fabulous effort into taking great photos. And one which I really liked was this one right here. This looks clearly like it's outdoors, we're camping, we're hiking, and it's a beautifully shot photo. This image feels really aligned with the topic of the post, a breakfast, and it has really incredible lighting. It kind of captures that slow, immersive hiking experience better. So I think that would be a great choice for the thumbnail image for this post. Okay, here on the Tecutano website, we have um, on the about page a large amount of text. And so I wanna give you some ideas on layout when you have a lot of things to say on a page. If we do have our text running wall to wall, it makes it feel kind of like overwhelming to actually get through it. And the other thing to keep in mind about people and websites is that they often skim the website or if it just feels too overwhelming, they just leave. And that is not what we want. So let's look at some suggestions of how to fix this. The first one is breaking up the longer paragraphs. Second is adding subheads or bolded keywords for skimmability. Third, using columns or cards instead of one big large block of text, and also adding some photos or design elements to create a bit of breathing space and visual interest throughout the large amount of text. Okay, so I just ever so slightly tweaked the R team section to really make this text more easily readable so we can actually get through it. As I read through it, holy smokes, Roxanne, you have the history of an absolute champion. This is incredible. A few things which I did here to make it a bit more easily readable. One, anytime we talk about a person, people want to see the person of said, face of said person. So I took an image off the website and put it here. I would of course recommend anytime we do a headshot, um, if you can do it where we can like really see your wonderful smiling face without the sunglasses in an ideal situation would be perfect. I also made a few other slight tweaks. One, just kind of like, giving hits of quick information. So from role previously sort of bolded to break it up a little bit. Then um, for the next section, I've also done it where it's um, in columns as opposed to wall to wall on the page. It is more easily readable to read things when there's only so many words on one line. So that's the first thing, columns, image of the face also again adds to the readability of it. Then another big title before we get to the next section so that we have some sort of like breakup in between all of the text. I took, you had a listing of all the incredible places you have presented before. So I took them and I put them into a bullet point list because that makes it again, just like easier and quicker for me to read through. The other thing which I noticed, you mentioned you went to Auburn University, love that. Um, and you've worked at eight summer and winter Olympics. So I was thinking the other thing which could be nice if you 
have it is some photos of those events. Maybe we actually have the text just going down like one column in the middle of the page and then images of that happening on the left hand, right hand side. I don't have any images like that, so I won't do it, but that could be an idea. This is a quick design idea just to give you a rough direction when I talk about like images happening down the side of the page and then text in the middle. Of course, the text doesn't need to be as like large of headings like this. It could just still be paragraph text, um, maybe with a few headings dispersed throughout to make it more easily readable. But this kind of adds the character, adds the visibility and readability that we're going for. So we make sure people actually get through your hella impressive bio. All right, now you know exactly why your website feels off and how to fix it. Now, if you've made those tweaks, your site is going to feel way more polished, cohesive, and put together. But here's the thing. If you want your business to not just look okay, but genuinely high-end and expensive, there's actually a few more things you need to know. Click right here to watch my video on six design rules to instantly make your website look expensive. You are going to love it.